Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I, I will just uh, say hello and, and, and thank you all very much for, for, for offering this very useful uh, information session for all our bursary holders and hopefully also for some of the uh, academics that, that uh, also need probably a, 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 a refresher in how to deal with the NRF submission procedures. procedures yeah? No, no. Um, I know that I'm, I know not, that I'm not officially part of the, part of the agenda, so I just want to, 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 to thank you all very much for being, uh, for being here, and, 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 and I leave you in the expert, expert hands of the, the NRF colleagues, colleagues and, uh, and, uh, and Rene will do the, 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 the NITEX uh, side of things. So thank you very much for, 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 for this this morning. And, and if everybody is happy, we are recording this event so that we can uh, post it on our website so that students and, uh, and other academics, uh, associates that uh, for whatever reason can't uh, join this morning, will have the opportunity to watch it offline uh, in the evening when, when load shedding permitting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, thank you very much. Then uh, I think, Prof. Rene, over to you. Yeah, you, do the, you will introduce the various Nathan, speakers. also good thank morning. You. Apologies, I didn't say good morning yet. Thank you very much uh, for your morning, uh, excellent you, team everybody. hosting this. I really uh, appreciate it. Um, we really very grateful for your time because I think this is such an, op uh, an excellent opportunity for our students with the current bursary holders, you know, future bursary holders to be able to ask questions, learn as much as possible so that we can all ensure that the process is as smooth as possible. And uh, thank you also to the team for, for doing everything they've done until now. Uh, if there's any help required by anybody, please, you know, post it in the chat, uh, email us uh, anytime, whatever needs to be done to make sure that all the loose ends are tied up and that everything is done as fluently as possible for the 2024 cycle. So I hand over to you, Malik Khotla. Thank you very much and welcome to everybody. Muted. Oh, sorry, I'm muted. <laughs> yeah, I thank you so much, Renee. I'll hand over to Frank, who is the program director for today. Over to you, Frank. Thank you, Malik Khotla. Good morning, Frank. Um, good morning, colleagues. Uh, I hope everybody is good. Um, I, I, I think our program is very short for today and we will try to be uh, as accurate as possible to share all the information that is needed. Firstly, let me just greet everybody that is here, uh, our uh, NRF internal colleagues, uh, NITEX um, associates, as well as students, our collaborators, as well as um, our partners. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just try to share uh, something here as just as, as, as house rules. Um, I don't know why I can't be able to project. It doesn't want to project from my side, but let me try, let me just try. I don't know, can you, can you see colleagues? Is it projected on uh, your side? Yes, perfect. Yes, perfect. Yeah, we can see Frank. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me put it on the presentations uh, mode. Yeah, the, the, these are just uh, um, today's house rules uh, that we are requesting everyone that upon entry, please mute your microphone and switch off your video uh, to preserve bandwidth. And also you may only activate microphone and video when you are speaking. That's a request from our side. And use chat functions to introduce yourself to everyone by providing name, surname, des uh, designation and institution um, as, as, as an example, to, be, to say this is Frank Mazdebuka, Professional Officer, COE at the NRF. Uh, we're also asking you to set your display name to show your name and institution, if that's possible. Uh, use the chat function to share queries and questions. Please write out your questions fully uh, to be clear for us to be able to assist you. Um, we may not be able to respond to all questions as, as, as of now, and, and, and you are definitely welcome to email to the uh, NRF COE team to contact person, uh, which is Malhut as well as myself. 
And we're also requesting you to, to use the reaction function, thumbs up or applause to respond to generic questions such as, can everyone hear me? Uh, does anyone understand this point and all the stuff? And we also ask that you use uh, the raise hand and lower hand function to request speaking opportunity. And we're asking that uh, keep inputs brief and succinct to save time and enable more participation in this virtual setting. Introduce yourself when you're speaking. However, it is recommended that we definitely make use of the chat function. The meeting will not be locked as participants may experience connectivity challenges and may need maybe to uh, reconnect to come back. Um, if, an, uh, uh, if uninvited instructions are experienced, uh, then we advise you that please know that this meeting will just be shut so that we avoid all the infiltration and, 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 and the risk that could happen uh, during the meeting. Uh, the most important point is that please note that there won't be any minutes uh, to be taken in this meeting. We request that everybody take their own notes. The NRF teams will, will, will only note actions, timelines, and assign responsible person or persons to a particular uh, 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 matter. Uh, with that, I would not want to spend more time, but just to immediately go straight um, to the program of the day. And, and, and I want to hand this over to uh, Mrs. Uh, Malhuta Finger. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Frank. Um, if you can just take, take down your slides so that I can share from my site. Please let me know if you are able to see my screen. Yes. Uh, slide that says, oh, okay. Is it on um, slide mode, presentation yeah, mode? Presentation mode, yes. Oh, okay. Okay, Go perfect. On. All right. Um, thank you so much again, uh, program director. I'd like to uh, say hello to everyone and welcome to this session. My name, as Mr. Mazibuko has said, is Malik Kutlafinga, and I'm one of the COE team members. Uh, the presentation outline uh, for my, my part of the presentation, I'll just be giving a background of the NRF postgraduate policy, the eligibility criteria, the funding values for postgraduate students for 2024, the timelines of call for applications, and the review processes. Um, firstly, the, the background of this postgraduate policy. In 2021, the NRF through the DSI implemented the DSI NRF postgraduate student funding policy, whereby funding is mostly underpinned by the principles of equity of opportunity, representativity, prioritization, and um, success throughput. And in addition, citizenship, age, gender, and disabilities are considered in the overall allocation of funding with transformation of the postgraduate cohort as a core objective. And as presented here, through the policy, 95% of student of funding has to go to South African students with 5% to um, allocated to international students. And overall, uh, of all the people that are given the funding, 55% has to go to women. And for South Africa, the targets are as follows. For Black South African students, 90% of the funding has to go to them, with 10% for white and 1% for dis disabled um, students. The next part of this presentation is the eligibility criteria for application. So this one is for the first time applicants. We have about two categories for funding for the first time applicants, one of which is full cost of study and the other is partial cost of study. And both of these um, categories have con conditionalities with them. For full cost of study, the first um, condition is that one has to be a South African or permanent resident. No international students are considered for full cost of study. And the second conditionality is that 
if a student is an exceptional achiever, whereby they have an overall GPA of about 65% and above, that student qualifies to get a full cost of study. The third um, conditionality is that if one has one is financially needy student, but this can only be proved via ISFAP means testing, where all the students who have indicated that on their application that their household earning is below um, 350,000 um, per year. So these students then when they apply, they indicate that on their applications and then they are being sent um, by the NRF to ISPAP so that we can check whether the are financially needy student or not. The last um, conditionality for one to get a full cost of study is a student with um, disabilities. However, it must be noted that all, for both um, students um, who are financially needy and with the disability, they have to have at least an overall GPA of 65% uh, so that they can be um, be looked at for, for a full cost of study. And the second one is for um, partial cost of study. So with these ones, the student has to have also a, a, a mark. If they are honor student, their mark has to have has to be 65% for their final year of study. And then for the for the masters, it has to be the 65% for honors, they have to have completed their honor studies. And then for doctoral, they have to have also 65% um, of their master study and they have to have completed their honors um, studies. Okay, the second eligibility criteria is eligibility citizen, citizenship, eligibility and funding period for postgraduate students. For honor students, only South Africans and permanent students are uh, being funded. No international students have been funded and their maximum period of support is one year. For masters and doctoral students, both international students and South African students are being considered for funding as well as extension support for masters and doctoral um, um, studies. So for doctoral students, uh, the maximum period is three years. And then for masters, it's two years. For masters upgrade to doctoral, it's four years. It should be now noted that the period of support is calculated from the first year of registration for the study or the, re the, or, or, the or research, regardless of NRF funding. And it's, it excludes the pre-proposal year. So what we've been having is that the student will be on their second year of master's, say in 2024. And what will happen is that that student will only get only one one year funding and not two two year funding because they had already done their first year of master's. Although they did not get funding from the NRF, but we only look at the first year of registration. And in terms of eligibility for postgraduate student funding, um, to contribute to lowering of age at doctoral com completion, the NRF eligibility criteria for bursaries for full-time student studies will have an age limit to achieve doctoral completion by age 35. So with this one, the maximum age at application for honors, the student has to be 28 um, years. And then for masters, they have to be 30 years. For doctoral, they have to be um, 32 years with the number of completion being three years for doctoral, two for masters and um, one for honors. I'll now be talking about screening of applications by the NRF. These are mainly the reasons why some of the applications that we receive, um, regardless of whether a student is an, a top performing student or whatnot, that their application gets to be screened out at the NRF. 
So please take note of these because these are the most important um, aspects because we've had in the previous years where students saying, but I have like 90% or I received my, my honors with cum laude, why am I not eligible for funding? Just because they had missed some of these important um, documents that we need for our screening processes. So the first one is academic merit eligibility. If, it, if that is not met, if the student even has like 64% uh, percent of the uh, um, GPA, we cannot be uh, funding that particular student. And the second one is if your supervisor does not respond to the email that mostly has been sent when you apply for funding, if we do not have that um, supervisor or referee's response, then your application will not be considered. The third one is age eligibility not met. So if you are applying for an honors and you are 30, we cannot be looking at your application. You have to strictly adhere to the age limits that have been um, given by the NRF. The fourth one, if, if, if a student is a full-time um, employee, we cannot be giving you a buzzer from the NRF because the buzzers are being kept for students who actually are not working and are studying full-time. So some of the missing, some of the documents that we also need that you need to attach is your ID copies and your trans academic transcripts. For honors and masters, if there is no project outline, no information of your research provided, then we do not um, look at that application, we screen it out. Uh, these are some of the exclusions that are there for postgraduate funding. The majority of student bursaries will be awarded in a directed manner so as to respond to national priorities, vulnerable disciplines and fields important for socioeconomic development as may be identified from time to time. In order for the NRF to realize its goal of contributing to the knowledge economy in South Africa by attaining at least 1% of the global research and development output, the NRF will not be funding undergraduate qualifications regardless of their NQF exit level, masters by coursework, postgraduate certificates or diplomas, also regardless of their NQF level, exit level, and also professional masters and doctoral degrees. These are the funding values um, that are going to be given to the new students in 2024. For um, honors for full cost of studies, the student will be get, getting a total scholarship value of 157,125. And also the students are also given electronic study device allowance, but this is only given to the student if the student, if there is a need for such uh, an, an, an electronic device and the student has to apply this through the university DAs, they have to let us know that we need this specific device so that the NRF can um, release the money. And also the maximum assistive technology device this is only given to students with living with uh, disability. So if a student has applied, they can receive their, uh, their, their maximum assistive technology device if they, all, if they only give proof that they are living with uh, the, uh, disability. The next slide is uh, going to give us the timelines for the application of the call. The call is already out and the closing date, as you can see on the screen for masters and doctoral students, it's 11 of July. For extension support is 18 August and for honor students is 24 November. But it's very important for all the students to note first the institutional um, closing date because they have different, all the institutions have different internal closing dates. So the students have to abide by those closing dates because there's 
the universities will only be looking at applications that have been set that have been um, submitted within that um, timeline. So it's very important for you to go now to your institution and just check what is the closing date for the NRF application, the internal closing date for that um, particular institution. And from there, it's just different um, sectors, uh, all the screening that has to be done from the NRF site and all the applications. Remember the students that have indicated on their applications that they are financially needy. Once the NRF received those applications and the GMSA has, has to um, screen those applications and then we have to send it out to ISPA. And that takes like, over a month or so for that for those applications to be means tested before they can come back to the NRF. So um, the, in, in the NRF, we anticipate that all the students would receive their award letters for 2024 by the 22nd of December in 2023 for both masters and doctoral and extensional support students. For honors, they will only be getting their award uh, by the 16th of February in 2024. Please take note of all these dates because they are very important. We will not be accepting manual applications. We will not be accepting applications that have been submitted after the closing date. Um, all the applications, like I just mentioned, have to go through the NRF Connect um, website. We will not be accepting any uh, manual applications. We will not be accepting applications that have been sent to our emails. It has to go through the NRF um, system. So for students that are linked to NITEX, when you put in your application, you obviously have to select a program where you are associated with. So for you, you will need to select a grant holder linked option so that you will be able to include your supervisor's UID number. In this case, the UID number for um, NITEX, which all of you can get from Renee. Um, you can just have a chat with Renee with this one because it's very important if you do not put this UID number, it's very difficult for us to um, locate your application. You'll find that your application as it falls under the general scholarship and it might happen that maybe in the general scholarship um, funds get depleted, whereas you could have had your funding with NETEX and your application could have been reviewed via NETEX. So it's very important if you are going to be doing projects with NITEX, if you are going to be associated with NITEX, you need to make sure that you know NITEX UID number before you even start your application, okay? And the next step, like I, I have mentioned before, after all the applications have been submitted, then the students will either, if they are eligible, be um, considered for full cost of study, and partial cost of study. And again, for partial cost of study, international students and other students. For full cost of study, it's only the exceptional achiever, academic achievers, those that have achieved 75% of their GPA and above, financial needy student and student with um, disabilities. Uh, the review processes of applications by higher educational institutions. For honors, masters and doctoral um, applications, they will be reviewed at the universities at which the, the student intends um, to study for their postgraduate degree. But for COEs and national institutions, um, the review processes will be um, taken by will be done by the committee that will be um, appointed by NETEX for this, this matter. And then they will only be looking at certain parts of the applications like your research 
area and, and, and stuff like that. So this information, Renee, I will send it to you so that you can distribute to your committee for reviewing all the applications. And then after that, all the reviews, oh, they, will, they need to be um, undertaken using standardized scorecards that I will provide to you, um, Renee. Only applications that are recommended for funding based on the merit review may be submitted to the NRF by the university um, DA. So once the NITEX committee has done with their review, you have to send that those um, scores to the university DAs, or you can either send it to me so that I can um, distribute to other universities. Because remember with um, COEs and, and uh, National Institute, you're not only looking at applications from say Stellenbosch universities, you've got applications from U, University of the Free State, from TUT, from all over. So it might be um, a bit of a challenge for you to submit all these scores to all these different um, DAs. So we will have to make a set date so that we know exactly when, when you need to submit those um, scores according to the institutional um, cutoff dates. Okay, applications that are not recommended for funding based on merit um, must be rejected on the online system with a comment by the university DA. This is one of the most important parts because we've had applications that have been re um, rejected, but we, from the NRF side, we do not have um, information as to why this DA has um, rejected this particular application and then the student will be coming to us saying why must why was my application um, rejected but we do not have answers and then it's a long process we have to go back to the university DAs so if they are university DAs in this meeting please when you reject the, an application put a comment there so that we can be able to know from our side as well as to what was the problem with the actual um, application. The university DAs must submit confirmation of review processes um, signed by the deans of faculties or DVCs of research to the NRF. Um, all these documents will be shared and the scorecard in this instance, I will have to share it with um, Renee. Acceptance of NRF provisional awards. So once you um, you have been awarded by the NRF scholarship, there are certain documents that you need to submit in order for us to start with your award processes. We've had instances whereby students don't submit all these documents or don't accept online, and it takes time before um, your money can be released. As soon as you see that the NRF has um, awarded you an award, it's best for you to check what is needed, check the con conditions of grants that needs to be signed and all the documents that needs to be submitted to the NRF. Just make sure that everything is submitted and the deadline for submission for all study levels is the 30th of April, 2024. If this date um, changes, this will be communicated to the institutions. But so far, this is a set date for submission of all the documents needed. And that um, comes to a conclusion of my presentation. Thank you very much. And over to you, Mr. Program Director. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Malhuta. Um, I, 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 I guess, and I hope that everybody um, uh, got it right and understood the presentation as you went about. Um, but just a few things uh, from my side, which I would like to direct or to request you to, to, to provide responses, which I think they may be very important to our uh, um, stakeholders out there. Uh, firstly, is that how does the NRF communicate the outcomes and how can one as a student access their uh, conditions of grant and as well as, their out, uh, as, their, as well as their award letters? Are these sent to the student email? or students need to time to time check their portal at the NRF online? 
Okay. Um, when once a student um once I process the award on the system, the system automatically sends an email to the student. So the student has to go into their NRF profile and start accepting the award letters. Oh, so the okay. conditions, yeah. So now it's just the award letters and then the conditions of grant. It's just a click on the NRF system and then all the documents will be have will have to be sent via the institution DA. Thank you. Thank you, Malakuta. Thank you so much. And, and, and also, maybe also to convey this message to our stakeholders out there, it may assist for especially the students that have obtained or that have been awarded with a scholarship. Uh, for continuation of support, it is very key to understand that as long as the student has applied and has been awarded, this as the NRF, we call it an interrupted, and sorry, an uninterrupted support. Uh, with these following conditionalities. If the student still obtains 65% in terms of their pass mark or above that, and as well as they do submit the biannual and the annual progress report. And the third part that is very important, which we have come across as a very serious challenge um, when we're processing this uh, pro progress report is that some of the progress report do not have the, 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 the supervisor's comment or supervisor's report attached to them. And we cannot process that. Instead, we will send it back to the student and the supervisor, and we request the supervisors to always check their emails because the NRF do come back to them and say, can you please process this uh, progress report for your student so that we'll be able to process the, 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 the next year's funding for this student. And some students are at risk in terms of losing their scholarship because the supervisor has not responded or has not provided their report um, on, on a student annual progress report. This is, this is one of the policies that actually enforces the working together between the student and the supervisor timelessly. And we need to be aware of that, colleagues. Thank you so much. Um, uh, um, Frank, I just wanna add something on that. Thank you so much. Um, with regards to the annual progress reports, um, I have good news, it has been changed. So now the students for 2024 will only be submitting one, uh, one progress report. Unlike last year when they had to submit two reports. So it's just one report for this time. Annual report now, yes. yes. Thanks. Thank you so much, Malakuta. And, and also the other important thing, um, <laughs> because we have received too many queries from the students asking for this. Um, maybe Malakuta can, you can speak about this. If I obtain a, bus, a scholarship for masters and I was able to buy the electronic study device in my first year, do I qualify to be able to buy it for my PhD when I, 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 I get funded because this is an uninterrupted support? Uh, no, you don't. Unfortunately, that uh, money that did the assistance, assistance device, it's only for once. So if you get it for honors, you will have to use it throughout your studies. We don't give you every year that 10,000 for the device. Okay, thank you. So it means if I wasn't funded by the NRF at honors level, but I'm applying for masters, then I can get it as a once off support. And Correct. as well as if I wasn't supported at masters and honors, but applying for PhD, I can get it can get as it. a one sort. Okay, Correct. but also I think it's very important as well to communicate that um, this is not limited to laptops only. Yeah. It can be a desktop, it can be a, a certain device that is needed for a particular field or discipline of study, such as probably the tablets mm -hmm. and all other, uh, 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 maybe like licenses and all other things. Am that's I right? Correct. Yes, that's correct. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Malhuta. Uh, Mr. Sassman, before we proceed to the next item on the agenda, I don't know, maybe there's something that you would want to add on or maybe to communicate to our stakeholders? Uh, thanks, Frank. Uh, yeah, firstly, thanks, Malakotla, for your presentation. Uh, it, it was useful to me as well. It's always good to see what, what exists in the new um, call that I perhaps missed. Uh, so thanks for that. Uh, secondly, also, I am responding to some of the queries of uh, the students and participants. I, I'm, I'm behind, so I'll try my best. Um, uh, so, so please uh, 
do post as much as you can in terms of queries. We may not be able to give everybody a verbal opportunity to, to engage, but we'll, we'll pop it into the, uh, the chat. And then maybe two, uh, two things that I um, just noted. Uh, I don't think you touched in the schedule, your table in terms of uh, dates and so on. Uh, if I missed it, please forgive me. Uh, the date of provisional awards, uh, if you didn't uh, have that, uh, I, I'll just speak to it and then you can correct me if I'm wrong. So okay. remember uh, that the NRF will send you a letter and I believe now it is an automated letter that comes through the system. So once we, that's Malahotla, uh, does your award in the system, it automat automatically generates an award letter to you. I'm not quite sure if it goes only to you. I've asked that it goes to the COE, for example, as well as the as the supervisor, but I don't know, that may be still a, a project in the making, but we definitely will let the COE know who has been awarded. And there is a communication that's also coming out in terms of the current awards uh, payments soon. Uh, so so um, prior to that letter coming out, because there may be all kinds of holdups, we do what is called a provisional award, which basically means that we publish the list of students that have been uh, screened and uh, found eligible uh, provisionally. And we publish that on the NRF website. And as I say, we'll send that to the COE as well. Um, now that has been fairly late in the year, around about from middle of December. So we are trying, and I'm sticking my neck out here, but I'm not gonna give a date because I'm very attached to my neck and my head, but we're trying to make that as early as possible also given the fact that the closing date for this year's call is the earliest we've ever had in the last three years since the new policy was implemented. So we're trying to get it out as early as possible from, from us now. I'm not talking general NRF. I'm talking, uh, we, we know, we're known as the COE team because NITEP used, be uh, used to be a COE. It's transi transitioning to a National Research Institute. But the COE team is going to try and get it out as early as possible. Because for me, it's, 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 um, there's no issue with telling a student you've been provisionally award awarded. If you can provide us with all those things that Malahotla says is missing sometimes, then we'll formalize the, the award. So we're going to get it out. The other reason we're trying to do that is uh, I, I've noticed that all of us are human beings in the room. And human beings have needs, and I know that um, uh, students, as human beings, will look for the best prospects. So if somebody else, like First National Bank, is offering we one rand more than the NRF, earlier than the NRF, I know you're going to jump into your car and run to that ATM. So we're trying to, to assist you to get uh, some level of comfort uh, that you know the NRF is still interested in you. So we can try and get it out as early as possible. So we're trying to, to, to improve on that part. And then Malakotla, from your side, um, maybe it would be useful to speak mm. to um, what is your expectation of the students? Uh, the students from NITEX and from the, the supervisor, sorry, student, supervisor, NITEX, and then generally the institution to help us uh, service the student's application as best as possible. And I'll stop there for now. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, for me, I'd say that um, the student, actually the students, when they are applying, uh, they have to make sure that all they read all the documentations prior to submitting their applications because uh, well, it's human nature to miss some of these things, but I've had students um, send me emails, cry over the phone saying that I did not get funding because of this, because of that. So it's very important to be sure exactly what is it that we need from you. You need to make sure that all the documentations that the NRF says are important, you need to submit those um, applications. And you need to know, especially for you NITEX students, you need to know the UID number of NITEX, not the UID number of your um, supervisor 
who's getting funding from somewhere else. If your supervisor is getting funding from somewhere else within the NRF and they have a UID number, you not go, you're only going to be looked at under general scholarship. But if you specifically say this one is for um, NITEX, then we know I can locate your application number and I can be fast and process your awards and your applications. So it's very important to also liaise with your supervisor. You have, both of you have to be in agreement before you even submit an application. So we had applications where the supervisor is sending an email and the supervisor says, but I do not know the student what is going on. So you need to know exactly what, what is it that you need from us. And you need to know all the, you have to have a conversation with your supervisor so that everything can run smoothly. So I think those are the most important things that I actually need um, to put forth to the student and the supervisor. Have your communication, know that this particular student has submitted an NRF application and provide um, email addresses that are working because sometimes we get email addresses and then um, the email goes to spam folders or the email does not even go through. So it's very important to make sure that the details that you provide to the NRF are accurate. Thanks. Um, over to you, program director. I don't know yeah. if you are yeah. muted. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much, Malofot. I was still trying to respond on the chat. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are trying to multitask, as you would know how difficult that is for a man, a man such as me. Um, maybe the, the other important things, I know, I know Mr. Sussman in our program, we were targeting to have questions and answers um, after the presentation by Asunka uh, Deko, but I, 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 I thought while we're still on this particular uh, item, which is the presentation by Mrs. Malakotafina, is that we, we do attend to some of these important things before we forget about them or we miss them on the chat. One, one of the things is, um, Ms. Mal, uh, Mal, Malakota, maybe you can, you can assist on, 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 on this one. When it comes to mm -hmm. applications that fall off from the, on, on the process right at an institution, I know that we as the NRF, we don't get to know that. And, and, and students actually tend to send queries to us instead of going first to their DAs. And, and we have been emphasizing this during DAs inter, um, interactions that we request that all the DAs communicate with the students and the supervisor and the program in which the student is applying for when the application falls off the process right at an institution before it reaches the NRF. Because NRF would not have uh, answers to why that particular application fell off. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes, you're correct. And that's why on um, there's one of the slides where I said that when a DA rejects an application, it's very important that they put comments as to why this application has been rejected from the DA side. And it's sometimes if they do not communicate such instances to the students, then the students comes to us. So it's, it's very important because all the student details are there. If you are rejecting an application, it will be best to notify the student of this or just to alert us from our side so that we can be able, by the time we send out rejection letters, we know that this student has been cut off. It didn't even pass the NRF review stage. So yeah, it's very important. Oh. Well, I can say that it's very important just to put the comments so that when the student comes to us, then we know. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mrs. Uh, Finger. And, 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 and also, maybe this also would assist um, the, the, the students is, is, is that um, if, if I have applied mm -hmm. uh, as a student for scholarship and by mistake, I forgot to mention the UID number of my supervisor, of which at this stage of the grant holder, of which the grant holder at this stage is NITEX, Mm -hmm. If I have forgotten to put in that, but I realize after I've submitted my application and mm -hmm. I contact Renee to inform mm -hmm. her, is it possible for, I know this might be very difficult, but are there chances that you can, re, I can, Renee can request on my behalf that you locate my application from the general pool and then migrate mm -hmm. it to the NITEP uh, applications? 
Yes, um, it's yeah. You, you mentioned a, a really important one. Yes, it's possible for that to happen. So as soon as the student realizes that I made a mistake and my application is already sent through, you I cannot um, edit the application. It's important that you contact Renee and give Renee your application reference number so that she can contact me so that before even the general um, pool collect, uh, um, um, colleagues start with their awards, then I know I must just send them an email that student title has decided has is is actually a NITEC student. So we will have to take him out of your list. So it's very important. Send Renee an email with your reference number as soon as you realize um, the, the mistake. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marukuto. That is very helpful. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. I'm looking at time, but I saw a very important um, question on the chat uh, by Mary Owajori, University of Johannesburg, asking that, please, could you provide information on how those funded via NITEX or NRF, but are not able to access the NRF Connect to submit progress report? Uh, I'm not quite sure if I get this because I know we have access to the NRF Connect, but then you have to register and create your profile in order for you to be able to have everything linked to your um, to your profile, your application, as well as your progress report. I don't know, maybe Malhuta would want to speak about that, or maybe if 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 Mary's available, can um, uh, expand or elaborate on this one and tell us what the challenge was. Was it a system, systems problem or was it at the university and, and, and all that? You may yes, go ahead, Mary. Yeah, make your... Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thanks for the... If, if you don't mind, can you switch on your camera? Okay. Thank you. Um, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, so my question is that uh, I'm a doctoral student from University of Johannesburg, and I'm being funded by uh, NRF through NITEX. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, last year, I was uh, supposed to submit my progress report, but I found that going to the NRF Connect site, I could not access the site. It's saying that um, it's not even given me the option. So I had to go through Mrs. Rene to submit my uh, progress report manually. Okay, I, I think I think uh, uh, Ms. Kateko Maringa is 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 present. Maybe she can attend to your question. Uh, Kateko, you can go ahead, my sis. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Frank, and good morning, colleagues. Uh, Mary, last year all the progress reports were not on NRF Connect. All reports were opened on the NRF submission system, which was, uh, which is our old system that we had before NRF Connect. So, in order for you to have been able to submit your progress report, it simply meant that you had to access submissions instead of Connect. Thank you so much, Katego. Thank you, thank you for 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 raising this one because I think. Uh, a lot of people had uh, challenges last day trying to get their progress report uh, from the NRF Connect, but it was still on the NRF submission. Mary, does that answer your question? Um, um, partly, it answered it, but um, still, we, some of us, we are not able to assess the NRF submission system um, for some reasons. I'm, 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 I'm not quite sure how that happened because the NRF Connect was not yet implemented last year. It, it, it started being functional this year and everything was done on NRF submission. And, and, and if, if I may ask, do you have a profile on NRF submission? Yes, I, because my first um, application was done in the year 2021 on the NRF submission system. Yes, my and in that, case, in that case, you can contact NRF support uh, help desk and report that to them, and then they will, they will direct you to the relevant person who can assist you how to, 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 to access. Unless maybe at that time you were trying to access, it was under maintenance, uh, which normally happened, I think, uh, um, late in the evening. Am I right, Katego? I think our, our, our maintenance on our systems normally happened late in the evening. 
Um, yes, you're right, um, um, Frank, and but also to just to add the uh, Mary, when at the time when you were struggling to create a progress report, the the right channel would have been obviously through the institution involved them because they needed to know that you were you were struggling to create a progress report. But as Frank has already alluded, you were supposed to contact the NRF support team because then we would have immediately checked the reasons why your progress report was not available on your profile and yes. then attend to that challenge. At this stage, the problem is the system has closed for submitting the progress report online. So we're not going to be opening submissions for, sub, uh, for colleagues to submit their progress report. But it would be very interesting, Mary, for us to check what could have possibly happened at that time when you were unable to access submissions or submit your progress report. If you can still contact us, we have ways where we can check that was the progress report on your profile at the time or not. So please still contact us for us to investigate this further. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'll contact you. Thank you, okay. Kateko. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Frank, just a last one um, to Nkateko. Um, someone has just asked um, Sim, Sim Barashe, asked that, can you share an in-depth information about those already accepted for funding in 2023 and continuing in 2024? Where and how can we submit the progress report if you are not launching a new application? Do they still submit the progress report in the old NRF system or is it now with the NRF Connect? That's a very valid question and thank you. All the new progress report will be open on the NRF Connect system. We will send out communication to, uh, closer to when the call is going to open. It usually opens around November. Uh, we have done away with the biannual reporting. So as soon as the system is ready, we are going to send out communication. And again, I repeat, it will no longer be on the submission system. All the progress reports will be on the new system. Oh, so, so when you say all, you mean for continuing as well as for new grantees. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and while I still have you there, Askatega, you might as well just leave your mic on. Uh, I want to hand it over to you uh, for the next um, item on our agenda, which I would like you to, 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 to speak on. Um, you, you, can, you, can, you can take over because I think you're going to cover the detailed NRF application process. Over to you, Asun Katego. Thank you so much, Frank. And uh, again, good morning, colleagues. I'm just going to switch on my mic for a little bit because Renee did mention that she has never seen my face. Uh, my name is Nkateko Maringa. Um, I'm going to switch off my camera now that you've all seen my face so that we can proceed. As Frank has already explained, colleagues, my uh, duty for today is to take you through the NRF Connect system. I'm going to share my screen. Please note that I won't be doing this by using slides. So I will physically go onto the system and show you how it works. Before I do that, colleagues, there's just something that I really want to mention, which is something that would just assist all the applicants, this including the DAs and our DVCs or whoever that works on NRF Connect. On our NRF website, we have call documents. What we have realized is colleagues are not reading those documents before they now come to engage with the system. Some of the documents that we have will be your framework, your finding, uh, funding guides, your frequently asked questions, and so forth. Colleagues, we have picked up that for those applicants that actually 
make use of those applicants that read the documents, they understand beforehand which funding opportunity they're eligible to. They beforehand familiarize themselves with the call closing dates, which Malehutla covered, which is very important because what we've realized also colleagues is if you wait until there's two days to the call closing date and you experience system challenges, you leave very little room for NRF to be able to assist you with those system challenges, then you miss out on the opportunity. However, had you then started your application way before the closing date, it gives time for you to be able to be assisted. It gives time for you to familiarize yourself with frequently uh, asked questions and also to go through the application system guide. Malukutla spoke of the eligibility criteria that is also covered on those documents. And if you just understand what exactly NRF is looking for, it then makes it easier when you now have to complete the application on the system. So with that, colleagues, all I'm saying is please make use of all the documents that we have uploaded on our NRF website. If you are unfamiliar with the link, I will share it on the chat before the meeting ends. Colleagues, I'm sharing my screen. You can see it says login or register with ORCID. There are two ways of logging in on the NRF uh, as, uh, system, which is an ORC ID. The other one is NRF staff. The NRF staff is meant for internal uh, staff members. All our external stakeholders need to log in with their ORCID ID. The moment I click on ORCID ID, it will either log me in because this is not my first time of logging in on the system. So I can either put my ORC ID, which is a 16 digit number or an email address that is linked to that ORCID profile. I'm going to go through the registration process to show you how easy it is and how it doesn't take time for one to register a new ORCID ID. And this is only meant for first time users. If you have registered on the system, please do not create multiple profiles. I will tell you the dangers of doing that later or when I'm doing my presentation. To register a new ORCID ID, you'd click on register now, which will open up fields. The first field will be your name, make this testing May and I'm making it testing May so that I can be able to go back and delete the profile and we'll make it postgraduate one and confirm the email as, um, address. Okay, the additional email address is not a compulsory field. You can click next to proceed. Then it will ask for your password. Colleagues, the password that you capture here is the same password that you will use to log in to the system. If you want ORCID to send you quarterly emails, you will click on that option. If not, you will click next to proceed. And then when it comes to this page, colleagues, please always choose between everyone or trusted organization. And this is just meant for you are allowing NRF to be able to integrate with your ORCID profile. Because we do fall under trusted organization, you can select that option, consent to privacy, tick I'm not a robot, then proceed with the registration by clicking register. 
again, there's another page that says, uh, um, NRF Connect has asked for, for the following access for your ORCID record. Please always authorize. Again, this is meant for integration purposes. If I click on authorize, the system now redirects back to NRF uh, Connect system for me to continue the registration. There are only three fields that you need to complete here, which is the surname. And the only reason that I have to complete it is as you've noticed while I was busy with the registration process, I skipped the email uh, field. It's not a compulsory field for ORCID. However, it's a compulsory field for NRF Connect. You then need to select your date of, uh, date of birth and the email address. The email address that you capture here, colleagues, has to be the same email address that you captured on ORCID. And the moment you click register, the system will automatically lock you in. Just bear with me, it's just a little bit slow. There we go, the system has locked me in. We have a welcome uh, page and if you look there, we have few instructions. We actually have the link that I spoke about that takes you to the call documents. You can see I've highlighted it there. And we have documents for all the funding opportunities that are open on the system. So it's not just the postgraduate templates, it's for all the call documents. Colleagues, if you are a uh, uh, like Mary just mentioned that she had a profile on NRF submission, you have a way to link your submission CV with the new system. So instead of you having to go to career history, to qualifications to capture the CV, you can migrate your submission CV to NRF Connect. How you do that is you click verify, it will then ask for your ID number and password. This is the same login details that you would use on NRF submission system. And the moment I click on submit, there's a ver verification complete pop-up that appears there. Now, when I refresh my page, you will see that now that pop-up, oh, the, it has now changed from verification to sync now. The moment I click sync now, colleagues, the system now tells me sync complete. And what that has now done is all my CV as it is on NRF submission has been pulled to NRF Connect. The second thing that I'm going to talk about, colleagues, is person, uh, it's the profile, which is your personal details. Before you start applying on the system, please ensure that you have completed this section. What we have seen happen, colleagues, is Malukutla touched on the eligibility criteria, which included the age uh, to say if you are uh, applying for an honest application, you need to be 28 years old, uh, master's 30, doctoral 32. If you don't complete this section, there will be certain funding opportunities that you are eligible for. However, you can't see them because you haven't completed your personal details. So we encourage that before you apply, please make sure that your personal details is up to date. Please make sure that your CV is also up to date. Colleagues, not to waste time, I'm just going to quickly complete this so that we can be able to see all the relevant 
Okay, let me do this. I'm going to sign out and then. Okay, so what I'm doing now, colleagues, I just want to sign out from my Orchid profile so that it doesn't automatically log me in. So now that I've done that, when I now go back to Orchid, you will see that it won't automatically log, log me in. And I want to log in with this profile because then my personal details is already complete in order to save time. There are two ways to creating an application on the system. If I scroll down, you will see you have my applications and it just shows you the applications that you have created on the system. But when I scroll further down, it shows you all the funding opportunities that are currently open on the NRF Connect system. If I go on the left, colleagues, it says there my applications. When I click applications, again, it will list the funding or the categories rather. It has instructions, which we encourage that you please always read the instructions. Please, if there are links, click on them. Find out what NRF wants you to, do, to, to, to learn before you proceed. Then I will go to NRF. Um, Postgraduate scholarship colleagues to note uh, if you can look at the screen, there are five postgraduate funding opportunities that are listed here. It's the Sarau doctoral masters, and we have a masters and a doctoral template as well. If you hadn't read your framework document or the guide, or the eligibility criteria. You would not know whether you have to apply against the Sarau template or the master's template. We've had so many issues last year where colleagues applied against the wrong template and they would contact NRF to say, please move my application from one to the, the other. Colleagues, it's not possible for us to do that. And that is simply because for the Sarai um, uh, funding uh, opportunity, there are certain eligibility criteria that they are looking for that might slightly differ to what the general template is asking for. Note that the NRF policy is the same across. However, because of the different um, fields of specialization, Sarau must be might focus on something that the general template is not focusing on. The other thing to note here, colleagues, is the moment I click create for masters, the other templates will disappear. And that is to say, you are not allowed to create a template against that doctoral, this doctoral, Sarau masters, and the other. So you're not allowed to throw your eggs on the different basket. You can only choose one. Okay. If I click create for masters, it will then load all the sections, including compulsory and non-compulsory sections. And how you get to see that is all the compulsory sections I indicated with an asterisk. If I go back to my applications, I just want to show you what I meant about the others now not being available. Sorry, there's something there, but you should not able to see this. It's something that we quickly need to fix on our end because those should not be visible because I've already created an application. And I'll show you now, we just need to refresh from our end. Okay, I'm going to now add it to go through some of the sections. As I've already mentioned, colleagues, all the compulsory sections are indicated with an asterisk. If you are a returning applicant, you will see that the CV has ticked. A tick means that the section is complete. A cross means you still have to complete that particular section. I'm going to edit application category. 
here also colleagues, we have instructions that tells you that only students pursuing full-time studies are eligible to apply. We've had instances where colleagues will complete all the sections only to be rejected because we have made it very specific that we are only interested in, or rather interested for all those students that want to take up full time of study. Another thing to note here, colleagues, we use toggles. I think now colleagues are familiar with this. Last year we had challenges where colleagues were not sure how toggled or how the toggles work. If you toggle right, you are saying yes. If you toggle left, you are saying no. So what I've done now, I said, are you or will you be registered as a full-time student? When I toggled left, it means I'm saying no, I won't be registered as a full-time student. The other thing to notice, colleagues, is we have NRF funding reference number with the funding opportunity. However, you will notice that the moment I click on general scholarship, those fields are now hidden. If you are a scholarship linked to a NRF funded research, that's when we ask for this to fields. So you need to provide your researchers UID or application reference number, and please make sure that it is the correct information. Okay, I'm just going to put test data there, and I will select uh, funding opportunity and save. Okay, and you will see that that section has been now been marked complete. Basic information, again, colleagues, uh, this is something that you need to read the instruction so that you know what is meant by the title, by the descriptive title and abstract. Institution, you select your institution from the list. We have had instances where uh, applicants are indicating the title or the short title as Mr. or uh, Mrs. Please, if you are unsure, read the guide. It will tell you exactly what's meant by the short title and what is meant by the descriptive title. Another problem that we have picked up, colleagues, and this was picked up now during the funding period is please you need to know that if you are applying for a master's we fund for two years if it's a doctoral it's three years we've had instances where applicants would select one year of funding when we now do the funding decisions at a later stage it means you will be funded against one year because that's what you have requested for if you require two years of funding, please ensure that you indicate two years under basic information. Okay, I'm going to now save the section. Geographical area as well, colleagues, it's one of those sections which are very important because I'm sure I'm, uh, you know that NRF does look at previously disadvantaged institutions. So when we fund, there's a lot of things that the colleagues take into con consideration. That's why they need to know your geographical area. Again, all of this is on the document. So if you go through the framework document, you will understand more on how NRF does the funding, how they decide who to find at what point or at what stage. Okay, and I, do I have a question? 
it's there on the chat. I have a problem with my mic. I don't know. Okay, I wanted to ask um, if you got funding on your second year master and you are not done by the third year, but it's two years, right? So when you got the funding when you are in second year only, does it mean you're only going to be funded for one year or is it going to go uh, to 2024? Uh, other colleagues, I'm not sure if you got that. The mic was quite bad from my end. If you can just try repeat the question or Please I will check answer on, on the, the chat. chat. Okay, I'll check on the chat once I'm done. I think she's asking if you are a master student and you are already on your second year and you apply for a second year. I'm not sure if I also got it right. Um, Malukata, can we maybe attend to the questions on the chat while I, well, the moment I'm done? Yes, yes, we can do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, financial need colleagues also here. Yeah. Maybe let me quickly do the person history. You select the previous uh, funding. You select your current degree and you indicate, are you currently a DSI or HSRC intern? Yes or no question. You can then proceed. When it comes to financial need, uh, colleagues, please read the documents because here also there's a lot of rules. For example, the moment I do that, you will see that certain fields are hidden. So if I say yes there, and if I say, um, let's choose less than, let's choose that one, because there's a financial means test. So we do financial means test for South African citizens and permanent citizens only, financial, needy students, the household income should be less than 350 per annum and you need to complete the consent form. And you know, if you don't do all those things, then your application will be rejected. So it is very important that you understand exactly what you need to complete when it comes to the financial, um, uh, as a financial needy applicant. Okay, we have a question there. Has the financial means test been done? The moment I say yes, you, you, you notice that there are certain fields that were hidden, but the moment I say no, it then asks, do you give consent for the financial means test to be done? And you need to upload the consent form. It does tell you there, where to get the consent form. Applicants who give consent for financial misassessment must download and complete the funding application consent form. If you click download, that's where you will be able to find the document. Okay. Now moving on. We'll now go to financial need proof of NSFS and SFEP funding. Again here, based on what you select, certain fields are hidden. The moment I say yes, now I need to upload proof. The moment I say no, then I don't need to upload the proof. Instructions are there, but further information is on the framework guides or the framework documents. The household contributor colleagues, this is where then you will click create. You can add more than one household contributor. And there's a question here, if I list uh, a sibling, that's a 16 year old, um, sister that stays with me, you need to indicate, does that person contribute financially or not? When you toggle right, 
you are saying, yes, they do contribute financially. The moment you toggle left, then you're saying, no, they do not contribute financially. You can add more than one person under this section. Okay. And then let's go to the second or to the next section. Attachment section, you can, as much as there's one supporting document, you can upload multiple documents. Just make sure that you name your document correct. So if it's an ID, for example, which you don't need to upload here because you, you would have already uploaded it under personal details. But if it's an um, whatever the name of document that you are attaching, just make sure that it is named correctly. To upload a document, you click on that icon. It will then go to the list of your documents or where you would have saved your document. And the moment you do that, then the document is uploaded. You can go back and now you want to add the second document and that's all you do and you'll see your documents then get listed as such. And you save and it will show you with a double tick there and that is an indication that you have saved your documents. We have a size limit on the document, but we also give you a link on how to compress huge files. So if you're struggling to attach a document, it could either be the way you've named your document, it's breaking the system, or it could be the size is just too big. Then you need to click this link to compress the file. Okay. And um, let's go to degree to be funded. This uh, section also colleagues, please, when you complete it, just read, read, um, read the fields firstly, and then understand that we are requiring for you to enter the information related to your previous degree as indicated on the instruction. Okay, I'm just going to put test data here because it's something that I want you to see. So let's also note, maybe I should mention this, the discipline when it comes to your scorecard or when it comes to the DA scorecard, the data that you capture here counts or something. So based on your discipline, it has a merit to the scorecard that the DA has to submit through to the NRF. Okay. Again here, compulsory fields are indicated with an asterisk. So you will see that if it doesn't have an asterisk, it means it's not a compulsory field. So this is what I wanted to show you. It is employed on a full-time basis. If I say yes, the question is, are you willing to resign in order to take up the application? The moment I say yes, or no rather, and then I submit, the application or the system will allow me to proceed. But when this gets to review at the NRF, it is going to get rejected because one of the eligibility criteria is you should be willing to resign in order to take up the scholarship. So this could be one of the reasons why your application is rejected within the NRF because you said, yes, I'm a, um, full, um, um, a full time employee and I'm not willing to resign to take up the scholarship. I hope that makes sense, colleagues. Okay, let me just move on. OK, 
Okay, now academic achievement. Also, please read the instruction, understand what I've just highlighted now. I won't read it, colleagues, but you can read it while I'm busy com uh, completing the field. Please do understand because this is something that when the colleagues are reviewing internally, they pay attention to this. And there it does say, please only select pass if you studied at an international institution. That is also very important, colleagues. This, as I mentioned, a scorecard. Also note that the selection here weighs to the scorecard. This data actually pulls to the DA screen scorecard. Okay, details of research, depending on the funding opportunity, this is a master, uh, master's uh, funding opportunity. So those are the questions that would be asked there. And maybe this is something else that I should mention, colleagues. If you are applying for uh, an honest um, um, funding opportunity, you realize that the questions slightly differ to if it's a master's or a doctoral template. Project outline, if you want to understand what the, the colleagues or what NRF refers to as a project outline, you will find that on the framework guide. Alignment to national imperatives, how this section works, colleagues, you'll see there there is a no alignment to nation, national imperatives related to this application. The moment I toggle right, it means I can proceed. But if it stays on the left, it means then I need to complete the field. We have the classification in line with NRF uh, broad categories, national, imper uh, national priorities, national strategy, sustain sustainability development goals. It's not compulsory for you to go and complete each one of them. But if you have data for all, yes, please go ahead. But if you complete the classification in line with NRF broad categories and save that data, you can then proceed with your application. Okay. Same thing here, national infrastructure platform. You can read what uh, is meant by that. You can now say no plan to access platform and you will be able to proceed with your application. When it comes to science engagement as well, you can say no science engagement planned and you'll be able to proceed with your application. Colleagues, this is one of the section that we have seen a lot of challenges or we have received a lot of um, emails uh, as uh, the support team at the NRF. One thing to mention is the person, the referee or the supervisor, the person that you nominate under this section, they have to respond first before the DA can submit your application to the NRF. So before you nominate, I would assume that you have had engagements with your uh, supervisor they are aware that you are applying for funding at the NRF. So when you nominate them, already they should be anticipating a notification from the NRF uh, system to say, um, Kateko Maringa has nominated you as a master supervisor. 
please log on to the system to submit a response. You nominate by selecting the role. You search for the person you want to nominate. If they are part of the results that are retained, you select the name of that person and then you complete, if there's any other missing data, you complete the fields. The number and the uh, designation is not a compulsory fields. They're not compulsory fields. So you can only complete the title the, and the other fields and then you save. You can go back to create. Now you want to uh, also add the head of department, which might not be a compulsory uh, selection or a compulsory that you had. You add the head, and you can only know that if you have checked the documents to know is it compulsory for me to add both the master supervisor and the head of the department for my master's application. Head of department, if you search for someone and they are not on the list, you can click user not found, then capture their details. But what is important here, colleagues, is if I'm adding Anthipi, I need to ensure that I'm using the right email address. If I've added Anthipi, sorry, I just want us to go back to. If I've added Anthipi with her NRF email address, yet she's logging in with her Gmail email address. So Anthipi went to NRF Connect, she registered her ORCID profile, but instead of capturing the NRF email, she has captured her Gmail email. Yet the uh, student is nominating with NRF email. Colleagues, that means that Anthipi won't be able to respond. She won't be able to see the menu item in order for her to give a response for my application because I have nominated her using the wrong profile. So it is very imperative that you engage your supervisors. You find out the, the, how you can just ask for the email address really. So that when you search, you can even search with the email instead of searching with name or surname. Okay, I'm going to go back to application. Obviously in order for you to submit to NRF, all the compulsory fields need to be uh, completed. You also have an option to preview your application before you can submit. So you can make sure that you've captured all your data and it looks the way you would like to present it. And you click preview and it will render a document like this. You go through it. And once you're done, you can go back to your application. Then you can either print it if you like, and you can now submit to institution. Colleagues, before I touch a little bit on the DA screening process, do we have any questions? And I think instead of going via the chat, maybe if we can do it by a way of uh, hand, please uh, chair, help me out here on the best way uh, to tackle the questions. Colleagues can either raise their hand or I can just go through the chat and try to, to respond. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Askateko. Uh, this is very uh, informative and uh, I hope it's going to assist our colleagues out there to be able to find it ease in terms of applying at the NRF um, Connect system. Uh, just to kickstart on, 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 on questions, uh, I, I notice you, Prince. I will, I, will, I, will, I will allow you now. Uh, Oscar Tego, 
just 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 assist me here. Um, when 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 we're doing the application, there's a part where it says you must indicate the grant holder reference number, and then it says the funding opportunity. I assume uh, I'm just going to act <laughs> as if I don't know. I assume that uh, the, the the grant reference it, it it applies to two things: whether the applicant supervisor has applied for NRF grant, that's a reference number. But if the grant, the, the supervisor is already the grant holder, then there is a UID number, which is that what they need to input there. But when it comes to funding opportunity, are we gonna be seeing centers of excellence, such as NITEP, you know, MAS or whatever, or just gonna say grant holder linked, and then centers of excellence together with NITEX, they fall under grant holder links as well as such. If you can answer me on that one first. And then the second one is that uh, I understand that occurred. It, it, it is more like my profile. When I'm still a student applying, I create an occurred number, which that's going to be synced into the future for my own publications. But now what happened if I have created an occurred and then I didn't apply, but then I come back one to log in, I forget the occurred number and I create another one. Will that be able to be uh, matched? Or is that going to affect me into the future in terms of my own publications not being able to be uh, synced or linked to my profile? Thank okay. you. Thank you for the questions. Um, I'll start with the first one for the funding opportunity. Uh, currently, yes, it will show you COE invasion biology, COE de uh, human development. It will show you exactly the funding opportunity. Okay, great. That's and great. the second, <laughs> the second question, um, it's a very valid question because we are sitting with those challenges now. We, like you said, you had an orchid profile, and you have never used NRF system, but when you now come in, you've forgotten your details, and you create a new one. There is a way of um, uh, NRF IT to merge the records, but we, we, we are also trying to investigate if actually, maybe I should have shown you that as well. As part of registering on, on ORCID, there's a pop-up when it, it, it identifies that, but you're saying you are Frank Mazubuku. There's another Frank Mazubuku on the system. It will then give you a list of Frank Mazubukos and it will ask you, are you sure this is not you? So there as well, you can immediately say, aha, uh -huh, this is my profile. And then you can reset your password and so forth. But we find that colleagues are not really doing that. We are sitting with cases where people have multiple uh, orchid profiles. We can match them. But we also are trying to, you know, have engage, uh, engagements like this with our stakeholders to say, please try avoid having multiple profiles because it creates uh, disadvantages in the, in, the, in the long run. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. And it's very, very, very helpful, Gatego. Thank you so much. And what I'm taking home from your response is that I need to avoid at all costs to have multiple orchid numbers because that creates problems, not only for NRF only, but also for my future uh, uh, um, um, profile in terms of linking my publications. And, and, and that's gonna be a serious problem. Thank you so much, Asuka Teko. Thank you so much. Uh, I saw a hand from Prince, if I'm not mistaken. Prince, you can, uh, can, can go on. Prince, if your mic is off, you are allowed to hit your mic. Okay, thank you thank so much, sir. Um, I hope I hope I am audible because um, it seems like I've got few challenges in terms of network load shedding this side. But like, uh, the I've got three questions. Which uh, the first one it is actually related to your first question because um, I wanted to apply through such a chair, um, health communications. 
uh, I wanted to know how do I go on about them because like you were first when you go to to that part of linking the applications. And then secondly is that I have a problem with my with my account. Every time I, I want to see, I once used NRF on my honors level, but I, however, on my master's, I did not use the NRF. So every time I log in on my account, the new one, uh, I can't see my previous CV. And I want, I want to see it so that I can edit and update it uh, up to today's uh, uh, day, uh, date. So, but like I'm unable to see it. However, every time I, clean, I click on sync, it says, it have uh, linked the it have linked the CV to my new account, but I can't see the CV. And then the last one is regarding application for PhD. Uh, it's about the mark the mark still because I'm currently doing my masters and then I will I would like to do my PhD next year starting from January or February. However, by the deadline stipulated by NRF, I would have not gotten my results by then. So I want to know will I be allowed to use my honors results to apply. And if you may know, because I'm waiting for, like waiting for master's results may take time, may not. So in my case, if it does take time, I want to know how do I go on about it. Let's say I've sent through my application by, by 1st of July, and then I used my honors results if it's allowed or applicable. And then how long will I be given to upload or to forward my uh, master's results? Okay, thank you so much, Prince. I'll start with the, your first question for choosing a Sachi chair. So you do that under application category, you select um, from these options, you select scholarship linked to NRF funded research. I'll just show you again, if you select general NRF, the fields that will allow you to select or to capture your such chat details are hidden. So please ensure that you select the option that says scholarship linked to NRF funded research. And then here you will capture your researches or your such chairs reference number. And this is like Frank said, they have applied on NRF uh, systems then they get a generated reference number like the one that I've just highlighted now. That is an application reference number. You capture that or the UID. They are unique uh, identifier if you have it. So you can capture both or either or. And then when you come to the funding opportunity, this is when then you will have to search for the funding opportunity. If it's a Sachi, you will search as you'll search for Sachi and it will give you the different options that are there for Sachi for you to select. And mind you, these are the funding opportunities that we have opened at some point on our system. So you will be able to find it on the list for you to be able to select. I hope that answers the first question, uh, Prince. Second question about syncing your CV. What I would propose we do, in, uh, not to waste everyone's time, once the session is complete, can you please stay behind? I will assist you further with that one. And then in terms of the results, um, other colleagues, uh, Malikutla and my NRF colleagues, do you want to answer that? But we, before I even hand over to them, I know that the process does allow actually for the DAs as well to go back to uh, capture your GPA at any given time. So this is a new functionality that we didn't have on the system. So you can use your master's uh, results as far as I'm, I'm aware. However, I'm going to ask that my colleagues elaborate uh, further on that one. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, with regards to when you are still busy with your master's and then you have not received your results, you can still put in your applications, but as soon as all the you have received your master's, 
then you have to go via the DA's office for your masters to be uploaded. And remember when we do uh, provisional awards, um, this is where all your, all your um, GPAs and everything else will be checked and verified. So if you applied and you didn't um, have your master's uh, results at the time, the system will still allow you to put in your application, but then your results will have to be submitted before we can even um, do all the other screenings at the NRF. So you can uh, put in your application. Thank you, Malukutla. And, and, and also, Kateko, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I think on the system, where it requires somebody to put in their pass mark, I think there is a section, there is an option saying still in progress. And if a student is, um, click on that one, it allows them to submit and then wait to receive their GPAs, which are going to be submitted through um, the, the, the DA the university, as Malhuta has already alluded to. So the students are always uh, 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 like, like advised to still continue with their application and submit. And then, because normally we're doing the funding decisions in December, and also the outcomes, if I'm not mistaken, the announcement are made in January uh, to February. Then around that time, the student is still having the window period to be able to submit their pass mark or their final mark to the NRF, and then the NRF will be able to process that particular award and then release the funds as soon as they complete the necessary documentations, such as COGs, as well as providing their transcript. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I think that answers uh, everything that Prince was asking about, and thank you so much for helping us. Uh, let me allow Adetu to. I, I, I hope I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. You can come. You, you can go on my. Yeah, thank you. You actually pronounced it well. So um, <laughs> some of my questions have actually directed it to the chat, but um, I'm not fully convinced, so I want to ask directly. So first of it is that um, I'm a third year post, um, doctoral student. So on my NRF Connect website, I could not, I did not have access to the general um, doctoral application. So I only have for extension. So I don't know why that actually happened because I'm applying for the first time. And also for the um, details of extension, that is a section of that. There's this, uh, there are um, options for applications proposed institution. So I do not understand, is it that um, that is um, this institution I propose to actually fund my program or what is that all about and also the application grants and reference number which i do not have access to so i just need clarification on all of this um if you okay. can uh, attend to them thank you very much okay um i did yeah. to okay um with regards to you being a third year remember when you are applying this year you are applying for next year so if you are already a third year for masters, it means, I mean, for um, PhD, it means next year you will be a fourth year. So already you, you are not eligible because remember the NRF funds three, like three years for doctoral starting for looking at the first, of, first um, time of registration. So already you are a third year of doctoral. So you are already out for first time doctoral. And also, if you are not funded currently by the NRF, you cannot apply for an extension support. But had you been uh, funded this year, maybe for um, from the NRF, then you would be eligible for an extension support for 2024. So you cannot apply for an extension support if you do not have NRF funding currently. So you will have it like it's it's like that. If you are not funded by the NRF and you are already on your last year, then um, there isn't much that we can do from our side. Thanks. I hope All right, that thank you. that's clear. Yeah. Um, also, just to add on to what um, Alukutla has um, mentioned, you could find that you were on your first year of your doctoral studies or second year but yet you still do not see the funding opportunity under your profile. Remember the age business rule. 
So we ha still have that as well to say for you to be eligible for a doctoral um, funding, you have to be 30 years, uh, 32 years old or younger. For masters, you need to be 30 years or younger. So that also can be the reason why some colleagues don't see the funding opportunity on their profile. In terms of Thank the you. details no, of go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, in terms of the details of institution, that particular template, let me maybe just go to it, is meant for when you you received funding at the NRF, this one, extension for support and masters and doctoral. So you have received funding from the NRF and for some reason you could not take it up. Now you are applying for an extension and that's why you will see, we'll ask you for obviously the type of extension and we ask you whether it should be 12 months or six months extension that you're asking or that you're requesting for. So this template is for, you have applied, a reason you could not take up uh, the funding that you received and now you're saying NRF please grant me an extension with my studies. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, Asika Tego. You know, this is very much important that our colleagues out there need to understand the impact of not um, inputting your age on your profile because that disadvantages everyone from seeing funding opportunities. Am I right? You and are 100% most... correct. Yeah, so, so it's very important colleagues that you, you, you include your, 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 your age in order to be able to see all other funding opportunities that have age restriction. And if you don't do that, then you're gonna miss out. That is a very important one. Thank you so much, Asuka Teko. Uh, I don't see any other hand. I don't know if you colleagues see anything on your side as I'm also focusing on the chat as well as trying to put in some notes. But one important thing that I want to um, convey out there in terms of the funding opportunities that are there, in terms of the postdocs for NITEX, colleagues, please understand that these ones, you cannot apply on the NRF Connect for NITEX and Centers of Excellence Postdoc. The old modality is still applicable where you apply directly to the entity, to NITEX, and then NITEX, when they have approved you for funding, then they go on to the NRF system to nominate the postdoc. We are currently uh, trying to revamp that particular aspect by trying to incorporate or to be aligned with the NRF current uh, postdoc processes where people have to go online and apply there. But at this stage, for Centers of Excellence and NITEX, you don't have to apply on the NRF Connect. Connect. You contact the relevant office at this stage, in this instance, which is me, which is NITEX, and then NITEX will nominate the postdoc on the system. I saw a chat regarding the postdoc. I hope this is answering that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have anything maybe to add on what we have already presented, which is a very, very helpful and very detailed and comprehensive, uh, comprehensive presentation. I think we have covered everything that is very important for our stakeholders to be aware of and also to take cognizance of when they are applying. Can I allow Thank you maybe you so if you much. have anything else? Thank you. I think I won't waste more time. The DAs, uh, we have had numerous um, engagements and they know that if they struggle with anything, they are more, uh, they are welcome to contact me. But maybe as a reminder, um, please remember that you will not be able to submit to NRF if the nominated referee has not responded. We are getting a lot of emails from DAs asking or saying that I'm unable to submit this application to NRF. Just as a reminder, it's because the supervisor might not have responded to um, the application. And a quick uh, maybe process so that we all the colleagues are on the same page on how uh, the stages of an application go. 
So we opened a call, which was open in April, and then applicants will create an application. We'll, it will be submitted to the institution. The institution will do their screening part, uh, review the application and submit only those that are eligible to the NRF. The NRF will then also check, do quality assurance checks. Uh, they check all, also again for the eligibility criteria. They check for things that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, are you employed? Are you willing to resign in order to take up the scholarship? They can either reject or approve your application as well. It then goes oh. through funding decision. Funding decision, that's where we then award letters. After the funding decisions are done, we now announce the outcomes. And then obviously it comes with the award letter, condition of grants. And for those applicants that were unsuccessful, we will then send out regret letters. Uh, colleagues, there's one thing that we know has been on everyone's uh, um, uh, mind or lips. Uh, it's the fact that for grants that were awarded um, uh, last year or early this year, there has been delays in payments. Please note that as much as we've done three batches of payments to date, there's still a lot of students that are sitting without payments. The NRF is actually has been in contact with the institution. We have trained uh, the institutions on the claims module, which the, was completed yesterday because we were still ingesting all the offline uh, claims that we did. The three batches that I mentioned that we paid, the, our institutions had to submit offline claims. We have ingested that data. We are now preparing to open up the system so that the institutions can start submitting their claims. The moment all the claims are in, actually not all of them, the NRF still needs to, to work out a, a payment strategy. We will then start the, uh, the process of payments. So that bending question on when is NRF going to pay the rest of the grants, please know that it is something that we are working on and we are very close to now today communicating with the DAs or, and the financial offices to say, please proceed and claim on the system. Thank you so much. And that's where I'll end my presentation if there's no more questions. Prince, yeah, as sure. I've noted, please stay behind so I can assist you further. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Before I will allow the corner to come in, uh, from your understanding, uh, how important it is at this stage, especially with the introduction or the implementation of the new funding policy for postgraduate students, to work closely between students, supervisors, and DAs at the university? Is that meant for me? Sorry. We think you can just sketch that how important it is because it is, I it, that there's, some dis, there's some disconnection between students and DAs and supervisors at university. It's it's very very important. And number one, I will I will go back. If I nominate a wrong supervisor, then they will not respond. If the supervisor doesn't respond, the DA can't submit my application to the NRF. Yeah. If, so well, there's, yeah. there's, there's, we need to understand that there is, it's, we'll call it some sort of a workflow or a dependency on what the applicant does, what the supervisor does, and what the DA does. And also, as we touched, we touched on it not long ago to say, I'm a master's student, my, or my results are not yet out, you know, it's important for you to always have you, communication with your, your DA, because the moment your results are out, you need to go knock at your research office and say, listen here, here's my results. Have you captured them on the, on the system? Have you updated my GPA on the system? So that you don't get disadvantaged because of small things that could have just been updated or that could have been, you know, the supervisor is 
busy with other things because we do send out system notifications to the supervisor, by the way, to say Gatego has nominated you. But if I'm busy, I could easily miss that communication. So as an applicant, you can take it upon yourself to say, I've nominated Frank as my supervisor. I go knock and say, Frank, or send an email or a reminder, depending on the relationship that you have, you can even quickly call them to say, please respond. And yeah, it's very important. Let me put it at that. Thank you so much, Katek. I just wanted you to put it out there and express it in the way that you have just done to emphasize the importance in it. Because you know what other thing that people need to understand is that the NRF has become very strict when it comes to this new policy. We try to put everything in place and make sure that we, we do things according to what is prescribed in the framework document for this particular policy. And I know that in the past, some students have never, have never lost their passwords because they did not submit the progress report. But colleagues, please understand this. In this time, it is very important that you tick all the requirements, you tick all the boxes, and make sure that all the requirements are being met because you are likely to lose your scholarship. As Gatego did mention that we are not going to reopen the call for progress report. I'm right, Gatego. That, that is closed. And, 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 and that's how it's going to proceed in the following years that NRF is not going to give that lenience in terms of allowing students to now go and submit the progress report because they've missed the previous call. Am I right, Katek? You are correct. You are 100% correct. Um, and I think that's why when I started off, I mentioned to the colleagues the importance of reading the framework documents because that just drives this entire value chain. If progress, and because it's because there's, there's, we also have deadlines at the NRF. We have certain per, um, time frames where progress reports needs to be open on the system. We have a time frame where we have to review and read each and every progress report before it then moves on to the next stage. So everything just feed in to each other. It's, it's this value chain. And like Frank just said now, unfortunately, if you missed out on submitting your progress report last year or early this year, because we kept on extending actually to accommodate our, our, um, our researchers and students. But if you missed out on that opportunity, unfortunately, then it is done. We're no longer going to open the system to accommodate um, progress reports. And it also, again, colleagues, because it feeds into payments as well. You know, if we get a report from you, we sometimes get carry forwards, which might not be uh, um, applicable to students, but there's a lot of small um, factors that feeds into this huge uh, value chain. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Askatego. Thank you so much for emphasizing that. Uh, Vipana, you can go ahead and, 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 and ask your question or if it's a comment. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you, colleagues, for the presentations. Um, I actually gained a lot of insight um, on um, the NRF Connect. And I am actually on the NRF Connect, and I've been asking myself, how do I... Um, maneuver this whole system, you know how it is. Um, whenever we are faced with these challenges, we don't even know who to speak to. Um, so one of my challenges is capturing um, information under other sources of funding. It, it remains, um, or rather it reads unsaved, and I don't even know what I have done wrong. And I'm sorry if you have covered that in your presentation. I, I must have missed it. Okay, let me quickly do this. Let me go to my applications. Um, and I will obviously need to delete this master's one. I think other sources of funding could be on the... Is it under your doctoral um, funding opportunity? It's under the research grant. Okay, so 
so a different funding opportunity altogether. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So it's research grants, which call? Um, the JNIR. It's already closed, but you, I, I'm sure you can open anyway. Okay. So if the call is closed, what you're saying to me is now you missed up, missed out on the uh, opportunity. No. Okay. No, let me let me just quickly tell you. So I received some feedback from my DA um, to try and um, correct some of the things from my application. So this was actually the second um, call for this fund, which is the Russia J I N I A J I N R. Um, so they wanted me to correct some of the things in my own application. So I'm still stuck at the other sources of funding record that does not want to say. So okay. I do not know what I'm wrong, whether I'm, exec I'm, I'm not even sure whether I am capturing the information correctly. So that is what I wanted help with. And I'm okay. sorry for hijacking. Talk. Nope, not a problem. I think, Che, you can uh, maybe uh, guide here. We can do two things. I can ask, uh, sorry, I missed your name. And Zikona. Prince, Zikona and Prince to stay behind so that I can assist them further. Or I can quickly ask Zikona to share her screen. I think that part might delay things. My proposal would be if Zikona and Prince can stay behind so I assist further. But Chair, please uh, advise. What? Um, thanks, 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 Katego. Uh, I'm looking at time. I think we're supposed to have uh, finished the session at 11, and we're already six minutes uh, 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 away from, uh, after 11. So it means we are really running behind. But I think your suggestion could assist us very well that we uh, allow, or maybe let, let me firstly request this from. Uh, from Renee because the platform is is is, is owned by by, by Linux. Renee, is it fine that we can allow Gatego together with Zikona and and Prince to stay behind? Yes, and then they yes, yes. The Most welcome, please, please. Uh, Zikona is very well known to us, and I would really like you know for her to be helped. So thank you. Uh, that'll be really most welcome. Yes. Okay. Um. I, I, I don't know if there's anything else. Thank you, us and Katego, a lot. Uh, Mr. Sussman and, and, and Manukuta, if you have anything that you would like to, to say uh, to our colleagues before I hand this over to Renee for closing remarks. Um, I've, I've realized that there is a question in the chat uh, from Magdalene saying, for clarity, it's, it's possible to move from PCS special cost of support to full cost of support through appealing, or they have to start a new application for full cost for the following years. Um, um, yeah, I saw, I saw uh, Magdalene's um, um, chat. I just uh, advised her to send me an email because I know the issue with her, uh, her award. So I think we can take that one yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah, but, but the general response is that there are some students who have not consented to, to, to means test, uh, means, uh, financial means test, and then they automatically default to partial cost of support. But you have an opportunity to still submit through your DA after your funding of the first year that you request this to be done for you. And then the DA will submit that to the NRF on the following year together with the new applications, which then that will be taken to ISFEP and then they, upon the, 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 the results, the outcomes, then the NRF will decide either to upgrade or to still uh, maintain your, your, your scholarship at the partial cost of support. So if you have been uh, awarded partial cost of support by default because you did not indicate the consent or you did not provide the, 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 the proof that you were previously supported by NSFAS or ISFAS, you still have an opportunity to submit for that review to happen for your next year's financial uh, support. I hope this answers Magdalene. Um, then Magdalene, you can also communicate with Malfuta to have a direct response um, based on the merits of your case, uh, as, as, as she has mentioned. Uh, Mr. Sussman, okay, before I proceed, Mr. Sussman, Malfuta, do you have anything else before I hand over to Mr. Sussman? 
Uh, thanks, no, Frank. Um, thanks to everyone. Okay, thanks, Malkuta. Over to you, Mr. Sussman. Thank you, Frank. Um, my my final comment uh, would be to the students. I think the session was mainly aimed at, <clears throat> at trying to assist the students. As you would have seen in one of my uh, feedback, I said, we don't want to leave any student behind. So the session is aimed at assisting the, the students and I hope that it's been helpful. But what I want to say to you is, um, you know, your, your future is your responsibility. Um, and I've also, when Malakotla is not around, I also get to handle uh, student queries. And I am amazed at the types of questions that I would not expect from graduates. And then I asked myself, did the person read the information that the NRF deemed necessary for a student to know about to be successful at accessing the funds that we're making available? I, 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 so that's my first, my first re, um, request to you. Please read, please read in detail. The second one is communicate. Don't, you'll, you would have seen that as well. I said, don't sit on a problem. As soon as you see I'm stuck, don't sleep on it. Contact somebody. And as Irene said in one of her messages, please start with, the, with your supervisor. Prof, do you know? Uh, then Prof says, no, you go to the institution. If the institution doesn't know, contact the NRF. Uh, Kateko said there's a help desk. I keep at it. And as I start off by saying, your future is your responsibility. You have to do the running. You have to run things down. Don't get despondent. Only become despondent when the process is closed and everything has been done by you. You have to run things to ground. Um, so so that, that would be my message. And, and just to, on a personal note, um, you, you are so fortunate today. You know, it, when, when I was a, a, a matriculant uh, 7,000 years ago, um, I, I had to manually write letters to people to ask for funding. And I, I used to keep it in a shoebox, all my rejections. They were mostly rejections. I only got one, uh, I actually got two bursaries. The one was from my school the, at which I matriculated and hold on to your seats. It was to the grand value of 100 Rand. Uh, the other one was from the then uh, Colored Affairs Education Department, which enabled me to study as an educator. So you're so fortunate that you're able to click a button and so on um, and to, to access. You don't have to go and, 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 and run around with your feet. So do make use of the opportunity and we're all there to assist you. We don't wanna leave anybody behind. And then my last note is thank you very much to everybody who has assisted in arranging and in sharing information. I really appreciate the time that you've spent uh, with us this morning. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Uh, maybe I can leave with a joke. If there wasn't a joke in what I said, I saw this morning somebody sent, in fact, it was my mother who sent this um, uh, joke uh, now that we're in winter, she said uh, uh, she put a chicken in the oven to roast. And when she opened it to check on how the chicken is roasting, the chicken closed the door. It was so closed, cold outside. So, yeah, we're in winter. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye bye. I would like to, if I may, uh, Frank, if you don't mind, I would like to just thank Mr. Nathan Sassman and the team, uh, you know, for this excellent presentation. And if it's in order with all of you, I would like to propose, uh, and I see Mary or Jory also says thanks for the informative session. Thank you, uh, everybody. Uh, if it's in order, let's do this annually, you know, and um, I really think there's been a lot of valuable um, information here and by what the time we spent here today will help a lot of students to be able to get a bursary at a higher value, like what Mr. Sassman said, it's very important, read the stuff in advance, because one mistake can be the difference between full cost of study and partial cost or complete rejection. So please make sure ask you've all been told start early ask questions and thank you for this great session much appreciated yes annually thanks it's lovely uh, 